to oblivion there, but now the moment we've all been waiting for, the <laughs> snooker. I think people will be sitting at the edge of their seats. Has he or hasn't he got the beard this week? No, I haven't got the beard this week, as you can see. Uh, the, reason, the reason I had the beard for those first couple of programmes was because um, I was playing in Manchester in the Pirates of Penzance and I needed a beard for the character. Uh, but uh, I've since left that show and no longer need the beard. You like me better with a speech. <laughs> right, Paul. Now, look, it's obvious from your very first lesson that you weren't a beginner. When did you actually take up the sport? I started playing when I was about 11 years old. There was a local church youth club that I used to go to that had a very beat-up old snooker table. Um, and I used to play there quite a lot. Unfortunately, they, in order to qualify for the, for the youth club, you had to attend the church every Sunday. So I didn't keep that very well, so I didn't continue playing my snooker. And in fact, I, I didn't really start playing again till the beginning of the 80s, when it became popular on television. It sort of revived my interest in the sport, and uh, I started playing again. But it's a good game to know how to play in your profession, because there's always a snooker table somewhere, wherever yeah. you are on location. Well, it's great. I mean, for instance, I was doing... I started um, playing again while I was in Cats, and... Um, I used to go to a, a, a snooker club, a local snooker club, uh, during the interval, uh, not the interval, between matinees and things like that, and get a lot of practice in. And the great thing is you don't need a lot of equipment. You don't have to buy special shoes or anything. Um, you just go along and pick a cue out, out of the rack and start playing. And there's always someone who wants to go along with you. Yeah, and it's a great relaxation for, for, for theatre people, I think, because you can lose yourself in the game. It's quite concentrated. How did you feel playing a match? The atmosphere must have been incredibly different from just mucking about as you have been up till now. Well, while we were playing up in uh, Pirates of Penzance, um, uh, it was decided that it would be a good idea to play a charity match. And uh, so I got a couple of guys from, uh, from Pirates to, to be on my team, a guy called um, Dead Eye Dell and Honest Tell, and we played um, some show business people from Liverpool and uh, for charity, and it worked out very well. It was a very enjoyable game. All right, well, let's take a look at that now. All right. I got that black doll there. <laughs> so, <coughs> Dell breaks off now in the fourth frame of this team event. <coughs> Paul is alongside me now. Paul, I'm not uh, familiar with Dell. What exactly does he do? Well, we're currently appearing in uh, Pirates of Penzance in Manchester, and uh, Dell's my understudy in the show. I see. Like, but we play quite a lot socially, you know, after the show. I watched him um, earlier on just having a knockabout, and he seems a reasonably good player. Well, he's a uh, pretty well-built lad. I wouldn't like to argue with him, anyway. Yeah. Colin Ariti, on the other hand, is a very well-known Liverpoolian singer. And more recently, he's appeared at the London Palladium. And uh, I'm sure that you realise, Paul, that if Colin wins this round, that you'll have to play him in the decider of this match. Touching ball. Well, both players are obviously feeling the tension, Paul. You know that yourself, it's a bit different now, sat up here watching it. Um, I don't like using the word pressure too loosely, but basically that is what it's about. I mean, these two lads can play reasonably well. I would say that they were average club, club players, but um, from time to time they're missing the easiest of pots. Yeah. And the reason being, I think, is that they want to do well. They don't want to make a fool of themselves. And well, that's, a, uh, that's the thing that's, that worries you most of all. You feel so slightly responsible to the audience. Yeah. And uh, it's not so much the cameras and the lights, it's more the, uh, it's more the people here. You don't want to look silly. So it makes you, makes you tense. And everything sort of gets, you know, really uptight. Yeah. And the arm goes a bit strange. That's right, yeah. I mean, you want to move the cue like this, but all of a sudden, you know, it's, it's almost as if it's in a vice. Yeah. Anyway, it's a chance for Dell. So you would never normally miss no. that when we play. Unbelievable. Social media. So. And of course, it destroys confidence as well. The fact that he's literally missed a ball, which, which was hanging right over the pocket. Yeah. So, pink for the friend. I just am. I'm Fred. I'm Fred. I won. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's happy about that, and Colin can be well pleased with that result. 
All the tension's gone. And of course, he's leveled the match. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. This is the final fifth frame between Paul and Colin. The score stands at two frames each. Yeah, go on, Paul. So, Paul breaks off, and he's certainly got his work cut out here, because not only has he got match conditions with a live audience and TV cameras, but also the added pressure of playing the deciding frame for his team. <laughs> and Paul can consider himself very unfortunate there, because that was an excellent pot. Well, I know exactly how you feel, Paul. Exactly. Colin. <laughs> Down again. <clears throat> so the foul stroke by Paul there has given Colin a an opportunity to make his mark and put his first ball in this frame. One. Blue ball. Blue ball. Six. Seven. Well, the pot on the red was good. It appears as always finished a little too straight on the blue, can only run through with the white. But the red ball just above the black is potable into the right hand corner pocket. My hand shaking. <coughs> Well, Colin, there's not a lot you can do about this. Last call. Is it like that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I think the audience are laughing because they've seen left and right written on the soles of his shoes. It must be tactics. Sure. Well, that's it. And I think Paul can feel... Very pleased both for himself and the team. And from my point of view, I'm pleased that he's acquitted himself so well. That's it then. Here we have with us the president of the Merseyside Snooker and Billiards Association. To present our trophies, it's Mr. Norman Clare. Norman, thank you.
It grieves me to say it, but the winning team and their captain to accept the trophy, Mr. Paul Nicholas. Thank you. Congratulations, Paul. I must say, the atmosphere was electric. Did you feel nervous? I was very nervous when I was playing. Um, it, it, it's certainly a lot different playing in, in front of a, a crowd with the lights and the cameras and everything. It, um, uh, I think that's the difference between a really great snooker player and the really good ones. The great ones are able to shut all those things out, all those external things like the crowd and the cameras, and get on with it. Um, but I, I must say it was very thrilling and uh, it, I really felt like I was playing in a, a really top tournament, you know, I mean, I was really into it. Now, learning how to play snooker properly, has it changed your attitude when you're actually watching it on television? Are you that much more critical? Yes, it has. I mean, I look all the time now. I don't just sit back and, and, and watch the game. I, I plan along with, with the players. I, I think, now, where's he going to... He'll put the cue ball there so he can get the blue in and then he'll run down for the next red and then perhaps up for the... Um, so I'm much more able to, to follow the game uh, closely, having had the tuition from Jim Medicoff, who I must say was extremely helpful, and indeed has improved my game. Snooker is one of those games, I think, that you can't just improve over uh, a couple of months. You've really got to stay with it, and it will take a long, long time. It's surprising because it looks so easy, but it's such a precise kind of sport that you really have got to stay practicing for a long period before you really do sh sh show any improvement. So... Uh, I'm going to have to keep practicing more and more and more. I think you'll probably have no trouble finding places to do that. Thanks, Paul, very much. Thank you.